The makers of Rise of Kingdoms are putting together a new city-building war game that has ranged units, aerial units, and borrows a ton of mechanics from Rise of Kingdoms. The graphics look amazing, and it's got a fantasy theme. So in this video, we're going to do a full breakdown of everything we see so far in the videos provided by the developers. In fact, we'll watch them together to uncover all of the mechanics that are taking place in this game, and it does look really cool. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and I've often joked what would happen if you smash together a game like World of Warcraft with Rise of Kingdoms, and here we are. This game is fantasy-based with the classic fantasy tropes of humans, elves, and orcs. And in this game, you are able to do a lot of the things that you're familiar with as you build up your city, presumably collect units and heroes, and also then fight against other players. In fact, there are even some mechanics that we're used to, like the rage meter. And it's not all that uh, surprising that this would be the case. It's made by the same company, and it's actually very common in this genre, a game that we play, the city building war game genre, that a developer will try to replicate their own game with a slightly different twist to appeal to a different audience. But this game is more than just a slightly different twist, and that is largely because of the combat mechanics, all of which they'll talk about in this video. And at this point, they're just kind of doing introductions to the producer of the game and also the producer of Rise of Kingdoms. And I don't know how much collaboration's been going on here, but let me just tell you from what I've seen so far, some mechanics that are borrowed from Rise of Kingdoms. In fact, it's actually kind of surprising to me I thought that they were using Rise of Kingdoms to test sort of different things for the future of Rise of Kingdoms, but I think a lot of the mechanics they were testing were for this game. As an example, um, in Champions of Olympia, there are roads that make you go faster. Well, in this game, roads make you go faster, and terrain is very much used to your advantage. So instead of actually just having flat terrain entirely, there's actually height. And when you're at a different altitude, it makes a difference in the way that you approach the battle. In fact, taking a fight from the high ground is hugely advantageous for, I think, very obvious reasons, especially because in this game, there are ranged units and there are also flying units. Really important to keep that in mind. But you can see that some aspects of this really look familiar when we get down to it. You've got units they are on the map. There looks like there's some sort of heroes or commanders leading those armies and you're battling against other players. There are both PvE and PvP objectives, and this is the part where I want to start to tune in to what the developers are saying, because I do have to say, the graphics do look really freaking awesome in this game. In the Call of the Dragon's world, you can experience the searing heat of a volcano, the wintry chill of the frozen spires, the glory of the firefly tree, and the dragon maw's den. Uh, so, a ton of different terrain here, and on your way to the Primal Ogre's Den, you can challenge the Ogre to a fantasy duel and vie for supremacy. I do get the impression that there are sort of like world bosses that you go and fight. There's a village that you visit, so, I mean, this reminds you of Rise of Kingdoms, although there's a little card game you play when you get there. In the future, each season will be a continuation of the main plotline, and the content and storyline will continue to unfold. So, maybe the map is like kind of constantly evolving that you're in. Uh, in Rise of Kingdoms, we're sort of used to entering into KVK, so I don't know how that's going to work in this game, but that fight scene does look really freaking awesome. Uh, we often achieve classic victories through smart uses of terrain. Using terrain is one of the advantages in attack and defense. It's a common strategy. In Call of Dragons, we've recreated the most realistic 3D terrain features like mountains, canyons, passes, plains, and lakes, and these allow you to launch canyon ambushes, mountain region cross-country battles, and amphibious... Oh my God, amphibious operations? Okay. So the terrain is absolutely crucial, which makes sense. When you can actually attack somebody from range and they can't get to you, obviously you're going to wreck a unit that can't get to you. But then a flyer can just go over all of that crucial terrain, which makes a huge difference. Now, they, they're going to show us this scene here where they say they've sort of recreated a battle. It reminds me a lot of Warhammer 40K, or if you played, you know, Warhammer Fantasy way back in the day. I feel like there's definitely inspiration taken from that in the design of this particular scene, but they are trying to represent sort of the nature of the fight here and the fact that there are topographical advantages. So 
if you don't have the high ground, deploy a flying unit and then just go take out the archers that are in the high ground, as an example. There are also artifact skills to teleport behind the elves and humans to launch a surprise attack. So I don't know if artifacts are something that you collect, but there are special skills you'll be using. And this is definitely interesting. In the Call of Dragons map, there are a lot of mega bosses. So it sounds like there is PvE and PvP going on at the same time. Alliances can attack these bosses to win big prizes, and then these bosses can be summoned to aid them in battle. In fact, let's just pause this for just a second. So much of this looks familiar to what we're used to, and we get only a little taste of what the in-game screens look like. But way off to the left, I think, is the different behemoths that are available. We're looking at one of them here, the Thunder Rock. You can see that it's a level 10. It's got attack, I think that is, defense, hit points, power. It's got skills that have level ups. There's something going on over here, and presumably this is the energy to summon it. So you summon these behemoths to fight for you in battle, which is an interesting idea. Now, this next part is actually really important. I want to go through this really ca cautiously. We made some innovations to the in-game's pricing system. We lowered the cost of training soldiers, decreased the losses to injured soldiers, and we increased the storage capacity for resources in the storehouse so that even if you receive critical damage, aka get zeroed, you have more stuff to continue developing. It sounds like maybe, I don't actually know because I haven't played it, their intention is to be, um, I don't know, more friendly, I think, to more casual players that, like, can't handle actually losing a ton of stuff. And, like, yeah, it does suck to, like, lose a lot of your troops and resources and all these th things in Rise of Kingdoms. Okay, I want to key back to this point here. Different players have different preferences. Some like the large-scale battles, while others like the thrill of the pre-battle arms race. I do like Eve of the Crusade. I think it is kind of fun. Will there be something for everybody, no matter what gaming style you like? Okay, a little bit of a loaded question, very obviously here. Um, yes, we're definitely cognizant of this issue we provided lots of space in the game for people of different interests and preferences to participate. Um, we've added barricading and garrisoning fortifications and road construction to our battles. So let's just pause here. So when a unit attacks you from the front, you'll have rear service units supporting you from the back. So what they're saying here is that you see these here. These, these are actually, I think, player-built barricades designed to slow down an enemy or block their progress, this right here is a road that lets you move really, really quickly. These right here are the behemoths that were deployed by these different alliances. We know these are alliances because we've played Rise of Kingdoms, and here's a level 25 city, right? And it's the alliance LLLL. -L -L. Um, we'll just assume that stands for something extremely creative. And you can see their alliance banner over here in this picture. Right? So they've deployed this giant bear. They've got a hydra on the side of LGLG. LG. You can see the players from the alliance LGLG. LG. In fact, they've got their names on there. The players from the alliance LLLL -L 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 battling in. So I think what they're saying here is that there's a lot of strategic depth to the way that you use terrain. Presumably all of that is really, really fun, but let's keep going through this video and see what we have here. Okay. And block the enemy's advance so they can build roads to speed up your troops' mobilities. Yes, there, there it is. Right? Like, straight out of Champions of Olympia. When you work as a team, there's no battle you can't win. I just thought of something. It's Call of Dragons. Where are the dragons? Okay, well. Here we go. Brace for impact, everybody. Kind of a cool cinematic effect. Where they, you know, do the over-the-head shot at the table and then, well, spoiler alert, right? You'll see. Obviously, Call of Dragons is going to feature dragons in some way. I don't know that they've necessarily showed it to us yet, though. And I don't think they will in this video. Now, there was one other thing at the end of this video, and there are two more that we're going to go look at today that I thought was really interesting, is they start just sort of having this casual side conversation. And this, this is actually something really important. What have you guys been working on recently? These days, the team's been working on range gameplay for Rise of Kingdoms and formation strategies, new strategies, and new strategies are always tricky. True. We're going to be very critical of new strategies. It seems uh, the game's anniversary is coming up, so we're thinking about holding a pinnacle tournament. Hold, hold the phone. Pinnacle tournament? Exactly. Good question. Good question. Nice. Have you been working on anything else? Uh, well, we'll work on getting out new civilizations as quickly as possible. Okay. 
diversifying our KVK script. I think they mean maps. And that's all that give us the tail end of that, man. Okay, so big tournament coming up around the anniversary of Rise of Kingdoms. Okay. And, of course, things we knew about. New civilizations, uh, different KVK maps. Let's go look at the other videos for Call of Dragons. This is the first video that they released. And it was only a couple days ago that these videos went live. By the way, I gotta give a shout out to my Alliance member. I believe it was Joey who sent me this information. Also, I got a couple comments on my videos that were like, hey dude, have you seen this? Have you seen this? It's got ranged combat. And I thought, oh man, they're, I don't know, maybe it's just a copycat game. But then it turns out it is made by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. So let's get a look at this here. They've dropped barricades in to these units that marched in toward this hill. So they're shooting down from the tower, from, the, from I guess, the top of the hill. They're barricading in these orcs that are in the bottom, which is pretty rough. That looks like a bubbled player city. And that looks like another player city. This looks like they've got a building timer for actually putting together these barricades. Okay, let's keep going here. They're dropping barricades. The graphics do look really freaking sweet. Fight by land and by air. So what's the answer? When you're barricaded, fly overhead, baby. Step into a fantasy world. I mean, there's so much in each of these to, like, take in, man. So first of all, if the terrain is actually like this, that's actually insane, right? Like, if you can be up high looking down at something like that so far away, that does look really cool. Discover a vast continent is, is not wrong if that's actually the way the terrain works. And... There was a little quest symbol here, also really important. I think we see some gathering nodes on the screen. So if we look over here, this looks like it's a level two and a level two node of some kind, level 10 of something over here. Ah, and over here, they've got some sort of quest. I think that was the hut thing that we saw earlier with the cards. I'm, I'm not particularly into the random chance games, but okay. Step into a fantasy world, discover the vast continent. And that was a huge battle scene. In fact, these are a ton of, like, really large battle scenes in a, a bunch of varying terrain. And watch closely here. I don't know what this giant dude is in the middle. Maybe that's one of the behemoths. It says, uh, God, I gotta look really closely. I feel like it says Joan the something. It doesn't exactly look like a Joan to me. It's like a giant monster. But you get the idea. I think we can see here there's almost certainly open field movement. This march is going over here. Let's keep looking through this video, man. Absolutely nuts. Encounter awesome wonders. Pretty sure that's what that looks like in-game. Oh, this is not in-game footage. Fight behemoths, which we talked about in the other video. The behemoth looks like it's got some amount of health. And you smash it, and then you can collect it. And then use it to deploy against enemies, which is pretty cool. You've got rage bars that look like they're accumulating, by the way, on the left right side of the troops it looks like you've got health and then yeah the behemoth unlocked so that to me that little scene looked like sort of like a heliquary where well, like when you take down a boss you get some amount of credit for that and i suppose that it gives you the ability to at some point summon them when you've taken them all down so i think the pve encounters here are going to be super crucial it says behemoths uh cultivate an overview so you got to beat them, then cultivate them, and then presumably deploy them. And they'll have skills, and you work on those skills. You know, it is funny. I have joked before about, like, ah, other games have, like, dragons or beasts. And, like, ah, here we are. What if you had not just one beast, but many beasts that you collect? Okay, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening here. I do like orcs, by the way. I don't know. Let, leave a comment down below. What would you play? You playing humans? You playing elves? Are you playing orcs? I mean, bro, I'm not a sissy. I'm gonna play orcs. Let's just, we'll just leave it at that, okay? Look at this huge fight. I mean, there's actually a lot going on in that fight. It's a little tricky to see, but like over here is that Hydra behemoth. Pretty sure there's a dragon somewhere in here, and like obviously tons of players flying around. I wonder, like, how long are these battles for? Like, in Rise of Kingdoms, you battle over a flag or a fort or, like, a holy site, right? And so, in a game where you, like, get into position and it's tactical advantages from a certain position, don't those encounters, like, start and end very abruptly? Like, I don't know how you would have many, many, many hours of fighting 
But I mean, maybe you just battle over and over until the durability of something is destroyed. You can see kind of like highlighted in blue, I think is one team's maybe territory over here. And in red is the other team's territory. That's my guess. Okay, we've got one more video to review. And the start of this video shows you the tropes that we're used to, right? Like the humans, the elves, the orcs, they're of course enemies. Until maybe a bigger threat comes along that's more terrifying. And if we don't work together, we're gonna have big problems. Maybe. Just my guess here, based on, I don't know, they've stopped fighting and they're looking over here and the end is nigh. The end is nigh. Step into a fantasy world. I do like the look of the orcs for sure. I, whatever that, okay, that tree dude was pretty cool looking. I could get into like a tree dude, but this, this, this angel-y thing, bruh, I'm not into this. I, I'm in a fantasy worlds, but you got to work on a new look for this guy. I don't know. It just doesn't work. It doesn't. I'm not excited. So, so I'm going to say, I don't know, man. Oh, God. Maybe I just shouldn't pick a human. That's probably what it is. Okay. So some mechanics that we're used to here that's actually pretty important to go and check out. We saw, again, on the left, rage bar, right, health bar. Let's just look at that again really closely here. Boom. Okay. Big damage being dealt there. Rage bar. One, two, three, four, five bubbles. I think that's the health on the right. We see skill focus going up. So like buffs and debuffs like we're used to from Rise of Kingdoms. This actually might be a flying unit. I think so because you can see the shadows on the ground here. It's a little hard to tell when you watch this the first time, but I think that's a, some sort of flying unit. I don't know what the heck that is. Like a giant alligator with an umbrella shell weird thing. But whatever. And then these guys, I think, are archers down here, which is why they can shoot at it. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. A vast, immersive 3D landscape. I have to say, if these are the in-game landscapes, they do look pretty freaking sweet. I, I actually really like that. Quests with uh, cards? I don't know, man. I don't know. Sure. Uh, and tons of warfare tactics. Attack by land, attack by air. Summon behemoths. And we saw this scene actually earlier. Real-time battlefield skills, road, construction, speed up, thrilling, MMO, fantasy, warfare. I mean, I think this is like boss fights as well. These are behemoths that we're probably seeing here. Behemoths that you ultimately collect and use against enemies. Speaking of which, uh, big battles against other players. I, I, I sort of wonder like to what extent those fights are staged for the video versus like how, do, how will fights actually unfold. I think this game looks pretty cool. And it's honestly not surprising that the game would look cool because it's basically Rise of Kingdoms with different graphics, but also updated graphics that look good. Weirdly enough, I haven't actually found anywhere to pre-register, so I'll be on the lookout for that. After watching all this information, I really sort of have two questions, right? If we've already spent a bunch of time and energy and money and effort in Rise of Kingdoms, why would you switch games? And maybe they don't want you to switch games. Maybe they want you to play both games. But also, if I want a game where I have air units and I have ground units and I deploy them strategically, what about like StarCraft, for example? Where like, you know, it's not free to play, but you pay for the game and then you just have everything. And it's also competitive and designed to be extremely competitive. Just throwing out an example. I'm sure there are other examples of games that would fit the bill. And I suppose the thing that would make you want to play this instead of just doing something like StarCraft is that this also will almost certainly have a collection element and the business model is presumably free to play but pay to win, which means if you shell down cash, you probably get some advantage over other players. Although, how much will that matter? We'll have to find out when we play the game. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when we cover this next. I feel like I'll be making a bunch of videos about this as we see how the game develops.